and welcome back to my channel. So I know I don't look very put together. I normally start my intros a little bit more done. <laughs> but this video is actually, I'm pretty sure, going to be quite a long video. So I kind of just wanted to jump right in. So as you guys can tell by the title, today I am going to be reviewing slash demoing these LA Girl brushes. Now I have been wanting to get my hands on these for a really long time, but there are 21 brushes. So I was like, Ugh, I really want to, but that is kind of pricey if you get them all at once. But I took advantage of the Cyber Monday sale that they had on their website, which was 40% off everything. So I figured there's probably not going to be a better deal. Hopefully not, because if not, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and jump on it and get them so I can go ahead and review them for you guys. But before we go ahead and get started, I wanted to go ahead and welcome all my new subscribers to my channel. Welcome to the family. If you guys have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe by clicking that red button down below. As well, don't forget to turn on that bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, so LA Girl came out with these brushes um, and the whole collection is actually 21 brushes. Plus, they also have some sponges that come in a two pack as well. So just so you guys know, I got most of them. I actually got 19 of the brushes. I didn't get two of the brushes just because they're brushes that I wouldn't normally use. So I just feel like I didn't really want to spend money on something that I wasn't going to use. But let me go ahead and tell you which ones I didn't get. I didn't get the flat foundation brush. I never apply my foundation with a flat foundation brush. Normally if I do get those like in my Morphe Me or if I get them in like a PR package or anything, I end up using those brushes to kind of apply like um, facial mask and stuff like that but not necessarily to do my foundation so I didn't even want to spend money on that and I also didn't get the fan brush I feel like every time I get a fan brush like I'll use it a couple times and then I'll stop using it like I just I don't enjoy them so those are the only two I didn't get but other than that I did get the rest of them so just an FYI but I did also get the two sponges that come in one pack as well so what I'm gonna be doing is putting all these brushes to the test and give you guys my final thoughts of what I recommend recommend what is worth buying and what you guys should definitely skip out on but before we go ahead and start playing with these brushes I do want to go ahead and show you what brushes I got and when I show you each brush I am going to be including the name the number as well as the price on there in case you guys are interested and they are going to be about three seconds each brush in case you guys are interested in kind of screenshotting and seeing which ones you can want to get and feel free to go ahead and check the description box down below I'll go ahead and link all the brushes down there as well as the products that I use today I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be mentioning them or not but just in case I don't because I don't want the video to be too too long then just be sure to check the description box down below so yeah let me go ahead and show you the brushes that I got So those are the 19 brushes that I got plus the sponge. I only showed you one sponge, but the package does come um, with two sponges for that price of $12.99. Now, one last thing that I wanted to go ahead and mention just before we jump right in. I was so impressed with the packaging. I was so impressed with the way that I received this package. I was... I was really impressed. So first of all, they wrap everything in pink um, tissue paper, which is adorable. I love pink. I was so, so excited. I thought that was such a cute touch. And then the brushes come in a box like this. Obviously, this one's all tore up. <laughs> but on there, they go ahead and give you the name. They put the number, oops, the number at the top. But honestly, what impressed me the most is the fact that they were in such great, reliable, protective packaging. Because um, I was thinking, like, how do you brushes normally come and then I thought well the wet and wild ones and the elf ones they usually come in that kind of plastic kind of wrapping um, and then I was thinking the Morphe ones usually just come in like a plastic 
paper or a plastic um, bag, you know, like just to fit the brush. And I thought, you know, that's kind of crazy because the Morphe brushes are kind of pricey, you know what I mean? So I'm like, you would think that they would just send them in a more protective kind of matter. But anyway, so I was really impressed by the fact that they came in this kind of packaging, super, super protective, super, super taken care of. Um, I love that it's black and gold just kind of goes along with the theme of the actual brush. And then once you take the brush out, it still has the packaging. Now what I really love about this is that it has this kind of to protect the front, but they're each molded, each plastic is molded to kind of go ahead and fit the brush and protect its bristles. So I don't know if you guys can see that. It's upside down. I mean, it's backwards, but that's what it looks like. Anyways, I was just really, really impressed by that and I actually really appreciated that, that I had to mention it. It's, you know, for having such affordable brushes, um, I enjoyed and kind of appreciated that they took that extra step to actually take care of the brushes and send them to you in a way that they wouldn't be damaged. So yeah, that was all the information that I wanted to give you guys on these brushes before we go ahead and get started. But now we're actually going to be putting these bad boys to the test. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys all the way in so you can be a little bit more up close and personal and you guys can actually see how these brushes are performing. Okay, so as you guys can see, I went ahead and did my brows off camera. I did go ahead and use the duo brow brush from them number 207 um, I did like it I didn't have any issues with them everything went fine it worked perfectly good the spoolie is very sturdy it's not really really flimsy which sometimes tends to be an issue when you're buying brushes that are a little bit more affordable but I didn't have any issues with this one at all I actually really love the density and how firm it is so definitely a plus side for me so for foundation I'm actually gonna be using two brushes there are two angled brushes in the collection. They have an angled buffer brush and an angled face brush. I can tell you right now the angled face brush um, reminds me a lot of the Wet n Wild one because it has kind of like a little indent. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's very, very little. But this one is definitely not as dense as their buffer brush. So I have a feeling that I'll probably prefer the buffer brush. But I do want to do kind of a half and half so I can tell you guys which one is better because honestly, I don't feel like you need to get both of these. I feel like with one would be enough. Okay, so this is the side where I use the 108 brush. It actually looks really, really good. Now, I do want to show you guys the brush. It doesn't really look like it's sold product, which is a plus. So I started off by kind of spreading out the foundation and then kind of went ahead and started buffing so it actually looks really really good on my skin the only thing that i did go ahead and notice is that there is some shedding so there's one bristle right here and one right here now they're not really big they're kind of really really small ones but i did want to go ahead and mention it but other than that i actually really love the coverage i love how it blended out it actually looks really really flawless and beautiful <laughs> Okay, so on this side, I went ahead and used the brush 105. <laughs> okay, can you guys see? I don't know if you guys can tell, but this one is super, like it is releasing so many bristles. It is insane. So if you guys can't tell, I have a bunch of bristles on my face. <laughs> I have a big one right here, one right here, like three, one right here and like a grip right here. So I have a bunch of bristles. Oh, and right here too. So this one definitely sheds a lot. Now, I don't know if it's just mine. I don't know if it's all of these brushes in particular, the 105. The other one shed it a little bit, but not like this. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> um, I didn't like the way that it blended everything out. It looks a lot more streaky. I don't know if you guys can see, but it does look streaky. So I definitely did not like this brush whatsoever. Yeah, this is a hot mess. <laughs> now I'm going to go in with the 1112 concealer brush to go ahead and apply my concealer. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so I didn't really like the way that that concealer brush applied um, the concealer. It feels like it steals a lot of my product. I don't know, I'm a little bit on the fence with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and try it out to go ahead and apply primer on my eyes, see if I like it better. Now to go ahead and blend that out, I am gonna be using the sponge. And I do have to tell you when I first felt it. It is very, <clears throat> what happened to my voice? It is very, very soft. So I'm actually really, really excited to use this. Okay, so the sponge, I like. It blends it out very, very nicely. It didn't remove my makeup. Sometimes what happens, I feel like when you use new sponges or some certain types of sponges, what happens is that they go ahead and kind of like steal all the concealer and you can see your bare skin again. This one didn't do that. Um, I can definitely see the coverage. It didn't affect anything. It blended it out really, really well with the foundation. Um, it actually looks really, really beautiful and flawless. Oh my God, I have so many bristles on my face. Like it's starting to itch, you know what I mean? I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do next when I use it is do my whole foundation and see how it applies my foundation. So they actually offer a lot of stippling brushes. They offer three. Honestly, when it comes to stippling brushes, you can use these to go ahead and apply foundation, to go ahead and do your prep, to do your highlight, your contour. I don't use them very often, but for today's video, I'm actually going to use the mini stippling brush to go ahead and blend out some cream contour. I am not a cream contour person. I actually did a video once on how to cream contour and it looked like crap. Like, I don't even know why I did that. Like, I thought I didn't know how to do it, but I really don't. It's not really my strong suit. I don't feel really, really comfortable with it, to be quite honest. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and do it for you guys. <laughs> um, but I did want to go ahead and throw that out there in case you guys are like, oh, that looks like shit because it probably will. Well, I know. <laughs> And to blend that out, I am going to be using the brush number 111, which is a mini stippling brush. So this actually worked really, really good. Um, if you guys like to do like cream contouring and stuff, this actually is very Stiff, um, and it's very very precise and I was a little worried that it was gonna go ahead and take off my base like my foundation but it didn't um, it worked really really good I'm actually very impressed um, maybe now I'll practice a little bit more of <laughs> contouring with cream products but I actually really like this I really really like this it was very very easy to use and honestly it was so easy to blend, like I didn't have to work that hard like I normally would have. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the brush number 110, which is their tapered brush. I feel like it doesn't look as tapered as it does online. I wish it was a little bit more tapered, but I'm gonna be using this to go ahead and set my under eye area. So this is one of those brushes that kind of did kind of poke a little bit in my under eye area. So if you guys have sensitive skin, um, you may not like this. I feel like it wasn't anything impressive or crazy. Like I feel like it wasn't like it applied it super beautifully. It was just kind of like, ugh. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but the bristles kind of like separated right here. I don't know, it's weird. I don't like that because it's the first time I use it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a contouring brush, which is number 106, to go ahead and set my contour with powder. So this brush, I actually like the shape of it. I just don't like the way that it applies. I don't know if you guys can see right here. So I put the brush in the powder. I always tap off the excess but it seems to be applying most of the product like really harshly at the beginning and by the time I start blending it out on the edges it's like there's no more product like it just pops it all right here and then there's nothing left um so it looks like I have a massive blending issue here I don't know if you guys can see it but I can definitely see it too it looks really really bad but I do like the shape of it so I don't know I do like the way that it looks on my cheeks kind of sort of but I don't like the way that it looks on my forehead See like right here too, like it just boof, cause that's where I started. And it's so hard to blend it out. Now technically you should be able to do cream and then powder right on top of it. I don't know if maybe I would have set my whole face instead of just setting the certain areas. 
if that would have helped, but I shouldn't have to do that. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the 101 powder brush to go ahead and set my face. So this brush was actually really, really soft. I like it. The only thing is that I normally don't set my face with powder, not powder with, <laughs> with brushes. <laughs> but I actually want to go ahead and use this one with bronzer to go ahead and bronze my face and see what it looks like. Okay, so I really like this brush to go ahead and apply bronzer. I love using large powder brushes like this to go ahead and apply bronzer when I don't want something that's super precise, if that makes sense. Um, so I like using these because they're not as harsh. It's kind of more um, subtle and you can kind of just layer it. Um, so I really like it for that. Like I really love the shape and everything and I love how fluffy it is. And this is not shedding. So most of the brushes aren't shedding. So I don't know what was wrong with that first one. I don't know. So they have this number 107 brush, which is their blush brush. Now, as you guys can see, it's very, very dense. I do not like the shape of this. This is not a brush that I would normally would use for blush. So I am a little bit nervous. Um, I am going to go ahead and try it out and let you guys know how it works. But normally I wouldn't use it for that. Um, I feel like this type of brush, I might even use it to kind of contour just because I do like the position of it. So I'd be able to kind of do like a line and then kind of start blending up. But definitely doesn't scream blush to me. But I am going to be using it on one side. And on the other side, I am going to be using this large stippling brush. So I actually do enjoy applying blushes with large stippling brushes, whether it's cream or powder. Now, the reason I like to use a large stippling brush for blushes is because blushes tends to be one of those things that personally, especially when I haven't used a blush at all and I'm kind of trying it for the first time, a stippling brush is a lot more forgiving. So, so if the blush is kind of pigmented, more pigmented than you thought, um, because of the way the bristles are placed, they're not as compact. So it really is a lot more forgiving. It'll go ahead and apply product on the brush, but then you can kind of slowly build up the product on your face. So I really love using stippling brushes for blushes, in particular when I want natural or when I'm trying new blushes that I don't really know how pigmented they're gonna be. This is always my go-to no matter what. And if you guys also want to apply cream and liquid blushes, then I also recommend using a stippling brush as well. Okay, wish me luck. I am so nervous to apply blush with this brush. Like, you have no idea. Okay, so it didn't apply as harsh as I thought, so I did have to do a few layers. Um, it does not look bad whatsoever. It went a lot better than I thought. <laughs> um, but still, I feel like it doesn't... It's kind of hard to apply it naturally because I feel like you have to make sure that you kind of blend it out and apply it like everywhere because it's so precise. So I feel like it still wouldn't be my preference, but it's not that bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the large stippling to go ahead and do this side. Okay, so that's how much product it grabs. So like you guys can see, it's super, super forgiving. Like it doesn't grab too, too much and it's not going to be overboard so quickly. I like this so much better. I feel like it looks so much more natural. And this one looks so harsh now. Ugh. So now I'm going to go in with the Stippling Dome Brush number 104. I'm going to go ahead and use this to go ahead and apply some liquid highlight and then apply some powder highlight. I feel like I wish it was a little bit smaller because it would be a little bit better for um, highlight, but I'm going to use it anyways. I feel like it's going to be perfect for the liquid highlight just because it'll be able to apply it a little bit more natural and kind of let it melt into the skin a little bit easier without it looking so heavy. So can you guys kind of see how subtle that looks? But very, very beautiful. Very, very natural. But I do wish it was smaller. Now it's time to do the eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by using the concealer brush to prime my eyes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the large shader brush, number 201, to go ahead and set my primer. Now I'm gonna go in with the brush 202 to go ahead and apply my transition shade. This is a blending brush.
Okay, this brush, I can already tell you it is amazing. It is really blending that out super, super nicely. Does not look harsh. Like, I'm seriously, like, I'm not even trying. Like, it's so easy. Ugh. And blending brushes are my weakness, and I should have ordered more. Like, I should have known. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and use a dome crease brush, which is number 204. <laughs> So this brush actually worked well to pack on the color. The only thing is I feel like I would never use it for that. I would rarely use it for that. But I think I'll actually like this to smoke out my bottom lashes. So I'm going to try it out for that as well. So now I'm going to use 203, which is also another blending brush. So that last brush I think is perfect to really go ahead and kind of define the crease and be more precise because of the shape that it is. Now I'm going to go in with 206 which is a smudger brush but it is so tiny and I love this shape like it's such a perfect size that I think this would actually be super super good to go ahead and kind of clean the lid when you want to use some concealer and kind of clean it up before applying your lid color. So that's what I'm going to use it for. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a small shader brush, number 205, to go ahead and pack on my lid color. Okay, so before I blend it out, that is how it was applied without me even wetting the brush. So it actually applied it very, very nicely. Now I'm going to go back in with my dome crease to go ahead and spoke out my bottom lashes. Now I'm going to use this angled liner brush number 208 to apply my liner. So I actually think that this worked really, really well considering how old my liner was. <laughs> That's why it looks so gorgeous. This one looks like crap. Ugh. And last but not least, we have this lip brush number 301. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you back out and let you guys know what my final thoughts on these brushes are. Okay, you guys, so if you've managed to say this, long thank you so much <laughs> i know this video is pretty pretty long but i really wanted to go ahead and try all these brushes that way hopefully it'll give you guys a better idea of what you guys should get and what you should totally skip out on so what i did is i went ahead and divided them into three groups the group that i definitely recommend that you guys need to get the other group is with brushes that i was like uh, like i didn't love i didn't hate but I feel like it's just personal preference if you guys use those kinds of brushes. And the last ones are the definitely skip out on, like you don't need them, run away, don't look at them, ignore them completely. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you guys the ones that I don't recommend. So the first one that I don't recommend is the 107. So this is the blush brush. This is the one that I was telling you that I normally wouldn't use a brush like this to go ahead and apply my blush. I just feel like it's very, very dense, very, very precise. And I feel like... It can get a little crazy and a little overboard when it comes to using it for blush. Now, that is not to say you can't use it for anything else. Um, I could probably use this for contour if I really wanted to, but still, I feel like it's one of those brushes that I really wouldn't gravitate towards. I really wouldn't use it. And honestly, I just feel like the shape is very odd that it's something that I would honestly never use. The other one that I would definitely say to skip out on is this 112 brush which is the concealer brush. So I went ahead and used this to apply concealer, to apply my primer, also to apply the contour and honestly I was just disappointed by it. I feel like it absorbed a lot of the product and it just didn't have a lot of payout. So honestly I feel like especially when it comes to my concealer I do not want it to seal my product. I wanted to put as much as I can on my face to go ahead and conceal and really help cover up those imperfections. So this brush 
blush is definitely not a go for me. I just feel like it didn't really work that well and it was kind of really disappointing because it is actually really hard to find good concealer brushes. So this one is just one of those that I honestly wouldn't even spend money on. The next one that I totally would skip out on is the 106 Contouring Brush. So as you guys saw, this was really, really hard to blend. I picked up the product and then I would go ahead and apply it and it would kind of deposit all the product where I would put it initially. So like I would put it here and then as soon as I start blending, it's like there was no product left. Like it was all right here and then I tried to blend it and it was super, super difficult. And it sucks because I actually do like the shape of it and I like how dense it is, which would be perfect perfect for like my cheek contour but honestly I just I didn't like it I don't I don't like it it's not worth your money now the biggest no-no if there is anything you get from this video avoid the 105 brush which is the face brush oh my god this brush looks horrible even now it looks horrible can you guys see the bristles it looks so so bad um so this is the one that i went ahead and used to apply foundation on half of my face and in case you guys don't remember like what is going on with my voice <coughs> in case you guys don't remember let me remind you that this is the one that shedded like crazy it left my foundation really really streaky it did nothing for me except just cause issues by shedding so so much it was ridiculous um, and like I said look at the brush it just doesn't look like it's really great quality in itself even the bristles look kind of like wiry I don't know if that makes sense so yeah this is definitely like out of all the no-go's this is definitely a no like no now the next pile are the ones that are my uh, Pile. So what that means is I didn't hate them. I didn't love them It would just be up to you guys if you use these kinds of brushes that I would recommend for you guys to get them But these weren't bad brushes. So the first brush that I have is the LA girl 101 brush The reason I put it in my uh, pile is because I really don't use brushes to go ahead and set my face like use um, a powder brush but I actually really loved it for bronzer so if you guys feel comfortable using a brush like this for bronzer I definitely do recommend it I feel like it is so big and fluffy it'll give you more of a natural bronze which I really like because it's not as harsh or precise so if you guys want something a little bit more natural I do recommend this it is really really soft so if you guys do use brushes to go ahead and set your face with powder then this is definitely a brush I do recommend it is so so nice it's really really nice the next brush that's in my uh, pile is the 301 brush which is the lip brush the reason I have this one in here is because I'm not a big lip brush person I think it is a really good brush to have if you guys like to use them I actually really like this one because it is not too long and it's very tiny it's like the right amount um, if I were to use a lip brush like you guys saw in the video I would use it to go ahead and kind of line my lips and then I would go in with my lipstick or liquid lipstick to go ahead and fill the rest in and it was actually really really easy to use so if you guys enjoy lip brushes then definitely use this one it worked really really well there was no shedding again it's like the perfect size to go ahead and be able to have control over the brush and also be able to do all the detailing the next brush I have in this pile is the LA girl 104 which is a dome stippling brush now the reason I have this brush in here is because they do have other stippling brushes and I feel like this one is the one that I would not be in a hurry to get. I use this to go ahead and apply my highlight and it looks really really beautiful. It kind of gives you that glow from within because of the stippling brush but I just feel like it's a little too big to use for highlight. Not that you couldn't, I just feel like I wish it was a little bit more small and honestly I feel like I rarely ever use, actually I've never used um, dome stippling brushes so that's the reason I also put it in this pile but if you guys use dome brushes, dome stippling brushes and you know you have a purpose for it then I definitely would recommend it. The bristles are really really nice, um, they were very very soft and they were actually very kind of firm. It's not one of those stippling brushes like I don't know if you guys have used some from e.l.f. where they're really kind of um, wonky <laughs> like they're not very firm or strong like they're kind of weak you know like they're very flimsy but these are not like that so if you guys want something a little bit more sturdier a little bit more compact but still a stippling brush then I do recommend these but like I said a dome stippling brush I just feel like it's something that I wouldn't use the next one that I have is a 110 tapered brush so this brush I used to go ahead and set my under eye area I just feel like it didn't do anything crazy like it's not something that Oh my god, like if I don't have this brush, my under eye area will not look bomb AF. You know what I mean? It was just kind of one of those brushes that it did what it had to do, but it didn't 
kind of blow me out of the water but if you guys don't have a tapered brush and you want to get something to go ahead and set your under eye area this is obviously a good alternative i think it's always good to have a tapered brush so if you guys are looking for one this is actually a really good one the only thing that i did notice when i was doing my under eye area that it was a little bit prickly so if you guys have sensitive skin you guys may not like the fact that it's kind of a little bit irritating not anything crazy but it is there and lastly that's in this pile is this 203 blending brush this brush is one of those brushes that I rarely use, to be honest, in general. Um, it did work well. I was able to kind of use this to go ahead and define my crease and kind of smoke it out a little bit. So it did work well. It blended well. It wasn't patchy or anything like that. If you guys like tapered blending brushes, then I definitely do recommend it. It didn't shed or anything like that either, which is always a plus. Okay, so now we're going to get into the brushes that I definitely recommend that you guys need to go get right now. <laughs> so the first one that I really, really liked was this buffing brush, the 108 brush that I wanted to use on half of my face super. Go ahead and apply my foundation i actually really really like this it is very very dense and it blended out the foundation beautifully i didn't have any issues it didn't shed like crazy um i think it was like a little bit like two little hairs but nothing like the other one that i use on half of my face this one's actually really good if you guys are looking for a good foundation brush to go ahead and apply your foundation blend it out buff it out you're really really gonna like this one and it's actually not that expensive um, especially if you compare it to like Morphe brushes or Lexi brushes. So this one's actually really, really affordable like the Wet n Wild ones. So yeah, if you guys are going to be ordering any brushes, I really do recommend this one. This one's actually really, really nice. And I actually kind of like that it's angled. I normally don't use angled brushes for foundation, but I feel like this one worked really, really well. The next brush that I recommend is the brush number 111, which is the mini stippling brush. So I use this to go ahead and blend out my contour. I told you guys I am no contour queen. Like I suck at doing cream contour, but this made it so much easier for me. When I used to do cream contour attempted, I would always use my sponge because brushes were a little scary to me because I always feared that it would kind of remove my foundation and I hated that. But actually this one worked really, really well. It is very tiny, very precise, but it's kind of firm with the bristles again. I feel like their stippling brushes are really, really good. Um, it's very firm. It's not kind of flimsy and you don't really have to rub really, really hard. You can kind of just loosely go ahead and do it and it starts blending right away with no issues. The next brush that I do recommend is the Angled Brush 208 brush. Now, my liner looks a little crazy. I know it's not my best job, but <laughs> the gel liner that I use is so old, like, oh my God, it's embarrassing. But actually, I really like this brush considering how bad that gel liner was and it came out like this. Like, this one doesn't look that bad. Um, it worked really, really well. I actually really like it. I really like angled brushes but i really really like this one i like the bristles that it has and i feel like it's not too thick what i find sometimes with angled brushes is that the actual bristles are really thick and it's really hard to kind of do that wing without making it look not like a wing because it's so so thick but this one actually does allow you to do that so this one i like it because it comes to a very nice point at the end to be able to kind of do that flick on the wing so this is like i was so impressed with this one so this is the blending brush number 202 i love this brush seriously it was amazing like i'm just I'm kind of upset that I didn't order more because it works really, really well. But I really like it because it really blended out my shadow really, really effortlessly. I didn't have to try really, really hard. I didn't have to apply too much pressure. It just blended everything. The edges look very nice and smooth. They didn't look harsh, so I really, really like this one. If you guys are going to be placing an order, I would order like 10 of these because this is bomb. So the next brush that I also would recommend is the 103 Large Stippling Brush. So I have bought a few stippling brushes and the only one that I found that I really, really like is the one from Luxie, but Luxie is more expensive than LA Girl. Um, I've tried the e.l.f. ones, but those are the ones that are really, really flimsy. Like It seems like they have no support. So if you guys are looking for a strong, sturdy, reliable, large stippling brush or in general stippling brushes i'm telling you all three of these are really really good i would recommend this one i like this one to go ahead and apply my blush it just applies it a lot more natural it allows you to kind of slowly build it up without going in with a heavy hand initially but this one is really really good i know some people like to use it to blend out their contour to even do their foundation so there's definitely a lot of options you guys can use this one for the other one that i would recommend is a duo brow brush this is the number 207 i use this and it actually made it super easy to do my brows i had no issues they oh, they're so bushy right now but they worked really 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 well i really like this one so what i found with these brushes is that sometimes the angled 
um, brush part is a little too too thick but this one's not thick at all it's actually pretty pretty thin and I grabbed the product really nicely and applied it very very nicely um, and then the other thing that I have an issue with sometimes with these kinds of brushes is that the spoolie it's kind of not firm enough but this one's actually really really good density it works really really well it blended out everything no issues so I actually really really like this one one that I really like also is the Anastasia but that one's a little bit more expensive so this is definitely a good alternative now lastly I have these other eye brushes this is the small shader brush this is the smoky no the smudger brush <laughs> um, the dome crease brush and then the large shader brush so I actually really really like these as well there was no shedding um, as you guys saw from my lid it applied the shadow super super nicely super pigmented I didn't even have to wet the brush so they actually pack on really good product I only use this one to go ahead and set my lid after applying the primer but honestly I feel like this is perfect for that or even if you want to go ahead and kind of do an all over the lid shadow I feel like having a large shadow brush is always nice because it makes everything so much faster and easier I love the dome crease brush to go ahead and smoke out my bottom lashes and then I liked the smudger brush to go ahead and kind of clean and carve out my lid with concealer because it is such a good size it's easy to go ahead and carve that in detail without messing up oh and last but not least this sponge I actually really really like this sponge um, it worked really really nicely remember that it is $12.99 but it's a two pack um, I am gonna be trying this again but I'm gonna be trying it with my foundation to see how it works with that but with blending out my under eye area and my concealer, it worked really, really nice. It didn't steal too much product and it didn't kind of pick up the concealer and remove it completely. It actually kind of packed it on really, really nicely and it blended it together really nicely with my foundation. Okay, you guys, we got through this. I was scared we weren't gonna get through this. I hope this video is not too long, but I know there was a lot of brushes, 19 brushes plus a sponge, and I really wanted to go ahead and test these out and give you guys a good kind of review and demo. Just because these brushes are not in stores, at least from what I have been researching, you can only get them online at the LA Girl website. So I wanted to kind of be able to give you guys as much information as possible just in case you guys are interested then you can kind of make a better decision of whether or not you guys should purchase them. Now one of the things I do have to tell you that I kind of don't like about it purchasing from LA Girl Online is that they don't allow you to return stuff that is open which kind of sucks because for most places like if you buy a foundation or some sort of makeup and you don't like it as long as you have your receipt you can return it and I just feel like all makeup should have that even like brushes just because you don't really know if you're gonna like something until you try it you know so hopefully this video is informational that way you guys can kind of make the purchases and kind of buy the things that you think you'll really enjoy because you can't return it as well so yeah just an FYI <laughs> So yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much again for sticking around and watching it. I know it was pretty long, but let me know down below if you guys have tried any of their brushes. Let me know which ones you like, you dislike, what you think. I am going to be doing a one brand tutorial. I also got the chance to purchase some stuff from Cyber Monday to go ahead and do a one whole brand tutorial using LA Girl. So keep an eye out for that. And as always, Thank you so much for watching guys. I love you so, so much. And I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye.